Greetings, programs. This is Wretch. Welcome back to Sherlock Holmes, Chapter 1. And in the last episode, guys, we discovered how exactly the man who snuck into the refugee camp died. And not only that, we found out that the man was the gentleman with the limp who broke into the gallery and also potentially killed Mercurio. So, um, that was fairly interesting. There's a lot going on here involving, like, a smuggling ring. But uh, regardless, finding that man's identity and how he died got us access to Mela, the uh, woman in John's drawing who was the victim of that horrible crime. Now, she did not particularly want to talk to us, or any white man for that matter, but she did give us a very important piece of evidence. We had the sketch of the abuser, and she added a cross to the sketch that is actually a medal. So, um, badges like this are usually awarded to British high-ranking officials, and not many of those visit Cordona, let alone work on the island. So, we need to go check out an archive, and the best place for that would be right here at City Hall, where I believe they have records on officials. So let's see if we can find out who exactly this tosspot is. Have you found anything helpful? Potentially. Gotta check the archive first. And then after that, we're going to head to the residence of one Niccolo Bernadotti, who is a smuggler who was apparently involved in this scam of, or the scheme of like getting the refugees out of the camps and having them work like really hard um, manual labor jobs and then giving them a little f bit of food and money and sending them back. So who knows if how he's maybe involved in it, but we're going to take care of this first. Hello, John. Okay, so... High-ranking British officials, so that one's easy. Period... Registry... Definitely need to go for occupation there. Districts... No, actually, if this guy isn't a normal resident of Cordona, we wouldn't be able, we wouldn't need to check the districts. Let's go with period. British. That should actually narrow down the British occupation. There we go. Thomas Norton. Born 1840 in London. Graduated from the University of Oxford in 1864. In 1869, started working at the Home Office as a secretary. In 1875, took a position as a military commissioner in India, honored by the Queen herself with the Order of the Bath in 1877. 1st uh, of March, 1878, was appointed as the British envoy in Cordona with his own cabinet in the City Hall. So, the toss pot is actually in this building. Really, now? John, do you have anything to say about that? I'll be right here. Well, you stay here. I'm going to try and shoot this man. Deputy Chief Archivist. British Envoy. Okay, let's go ahead and pin that. Is there... Oh. Thomas Norton, British Envoy. Holy crap. This does go pretty high up. All right. If you're here on matters of signing up for military service, come back tomorrow. Our department needs to straighten out some business. Can we punch him? Maybe we can observe him, though. Red eyes didn't sleep last night. Facial hair, no time to shave. And there's the medal. Order of the Bath. Well worn, never removed. Oh, what's that on his hand? Wine? And what else are we missing here? Old shoes. Rumpled clothes. Stays at work late? The Order of the Bath looks quite worn. The man is proud of it and never takes it off. The red stain on his wrist indicates that he has recently drank wine. His clothes are wrinkled, he barely bothers to shave, and his red eyes indicate that he may suffer from insomnia or deep anxiety. 
It looks as if the man li lives in within a nightmare, attempting to rid himself of his terrible memories of past mistakes. Uh, wrinkled clothes and red eyes may mean that he didn't return home last night. Instead of work, this man would rather lose himself in depravity and alcohol. That is the profile of a man that we saw in that picture. Not to mention, like, if he's like this honored bound person who's really proud of his metal and doesn't use it to flaunt, he would shave. You know, he would make himself, especially as a British envoy to like the entire island. No, this guy's a party goer. Why are you staring at me like I'm a Madame Tussauds figure? Didn't you hear what I just said? On my way here, I was wondering whether you might regret what you did. I tried my best to retain at least a shred of faith in humanity. I had hoped that you would hear her scream, see her face in your dreams, or at least once ask yourself how Nayla might feel. Who? Neither of my hopes were fulfilled. Why are you here? Show up! You defiled a girl who was with child. Don't even pretend that you regret what took place. Do you wonder why I came here? It is because I am disgusted with people like you, and the only way in my mind to rid the world of your ilk is to see you hanging from the gallows. All right, all right. Is it about money, as you said in the letter? I have it, all right? There's no need for violence. I've never written a single word to you. As you can see, I have a more direct approach. That letter, it wasn't from you. So what do you want? Answers, to start with. Fine. I suppose now we have a nice long talk. Do you drink, Mr...? Sherlock Holmes. And I do not. Shame. All the best discussions are accompanied by a glass of whiskey. But out of respect for you, I won't drink either. Respect? <laughs> That's an unusual word in your mouth, Mr... Where are my manners? My name is Thomas Norton, a British envoy in Cordona on a military mission. So, where do we start? He's taken getting punched in the face very, very well. Okay, um... Ooh. So, let's return to the beginning. What happened at the party? I vaguely remember that night. As usual at such parties, you meet people, you talk with them, they invite you to spend some time alone with them. What can I say? I got myself mixed up with the wrong company, and somebody must have mixed some psychoactive substance in my drink. After that, it's all blurry. I completely lost my... sanity. I made a terrible mistake which I regret deeply. You don't say? Do refugee girls often appear on the menu at those types of parties? It's... rather rare. So you didn't attend the party to engage in an exotic experience involving a vulnerable woman unable to accuse you of assault? I would never have planned such a terrible thing. What happened was just... bad circumstance. Now punch him on the other side of the face. The painting that depicted you in the image of the devil was stolen by a mercenary. Did you have anything to do with it? I might be a rotten person, sir, but hiring criminals for illicit purposes is not in my daily schedule. And buying the painting in an attempt to hide the crime, is that on your daily schedule? What would you do in my situation? I would never put myself in such a situation. You're young. I could never have imagined myself in my current position. Yet, here I am in front of you. We all make mistakes, Mr. Holmes. And I'm no exception. <laughs> oh, I hate this guy. Boniface Mercurio, does the name mean anything to you? He's an artist, right? The one responsible for the painting that compromises you. I found him dead in his room. Oh, that is bad. Wait, you don't think that I have anything to do with this? You had motive to kill him. Maybe I did, but listen. I know how this looks, but murder? That's on another level. I had thoughts that this Mercutio... Mercurio. Well, him, yes. I thought he could have been the blackmailer. But I was too afraid to make any hasty decisions. There were plenty of ways to fail by making a move, so I chose to wait. To see what he would do next. You have to believe me. I don't believe people. I believe evidence. Then look at the evidence. You mentioned blackmail. Tell me about it. 
All right. A couple of days ago, I received an anonymous letter. It said that in the art gallery at Caravansary, there exists a painting that incriminates me. The blackmailer made it clear that if there is a painting, then a photograph exists too. And I should be wary of what it might do to my reputation. What does the blackmailer want from you? Money, of course. What else do such people want? Needless to say, I don't remember anyone taking photographs at the party. Up until the last moment, I hoped he was bluffing. But he wasn't, as you've just proven to me. Show me the letter. I burnt it as soon as I read it. I've left enough evidence. There's no need for any more. Mr. Holmes, I've built my entire career on hard work and uncompromising dedication to the Crown. I made a mistake. But I'm not a villain from some cheap adventure fiction. By putting me behind bars, you will benefit precisely no one. Rotting in prison is the least you deserve, but I have a better idea. You will make amends and help the ones you hurt. Oh. Oh, man. Ooh, what do we do here, guys? Help Nayla. Help the refugees. Okay. So, this is my... This is the first thing that pops into my head. Nayla doesn't want any help. Especially from a white man, let alone the monster who, you know, uh, assaulted her. Like, I don't think her, him coming into her life in any aspect is a good thing. So, help the... Re I mean, we don't have really any options. Maybe help the refugees? Use your connections to help patriate the refugees. Find them decent homes. Give them jobs. There must be a meaning to your position and my decision. Yes. All right. I can do that. So, will you give me the photograph now? That's not all. Oh, we have to do all the things. Nayla deserves the very utmost of what you can Never do. mind what I said. Help the girl. I can't risk the press paying extra attention to her. I will do anything except that. I need to think this all through. Don't do anything foolish in the meantime. What makes you think you can decide what's best for these people? Such is the arrogance of British imperialism. I take your point. I like the propaganda posters. Okay, what are we doing? <laughs> I'm very confused. He claims himself guilty but proposes a deal. If I bring him the photograph, he'll help the refugees. Oof. This is going to be a tough one. Okay, well, we've still got Niccolo to chat with, so let's go ahead and pin that evidence. Um, let's head to the Mine Palace. System sufferers. All refugees are victims of the system. The situation they are in must and can be mended. The envoy's interest in the photograph is pragmatic. If he obtains it, nothing will threaten his reputation. Which leads to what? Merciless justice. The envoy can be neither trusted nor forgiven for what he did. Humiliation and ostracization from an outraged Cordona are the least he deserves. Give the photograph to Vogel so he can make everything public. Thomas Norton is a debaucher who has committed a terrible act. Even though he deserves to be brought to justice, I can't overlook the opportunity to do greater good. Give the envoy the photograph in exchange for the refugees' legalization. Hells, bells. Okay, can, let's 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 go do other things while I run that through my brain pan because that is, um, whoo, that is crazy. What a choice to give to the player. All right, uh, main office, southeastern Scaladio Bazaar Road. Let's see. Well, here we're on. We are on Bazaar Road. That's nice. 
Roman road. That works. We also need to make sure that um, none of these places have new furniture for us. Let me keep my eyes open. I think they show up as we uh, solve cases, though. Oh, I, sh I mean, I know what I'd want to do in that case, and that's have the guy hung, drawn, and quartered, but... This... You're, you're, you're making homes make the tough plays here. Alright, where are we going? It's near the intersection? I bet it's this place. Ah, Bernadotti Limited. And can't go that way. Do you have to take a side entrance? Hello. Hmm. Oh, the back entrance. And there's John, so we're on the right track. These workers don't look like your average Cordona folk. They're refugees from the camp. Oh, it's all of them working. Okay. Do you know anything about this? Oh, I'm sorry, but that's beyond my knowledge. I thought that may have been the man. Porcelain friend for every child. Creepy dolls. An essential remedy against sea scourge on any ship. That's our way in, Sherry. Alright. Do we have to fight our way through? Or maybe... Wait, hold on. Shipped from Cape Town. The wine route from colony to colonies. Maybe we have to dress ourselves up. So we either storm in or find a way for the guard to let us in. Um, let's... Okay, we can't change our clothes here. Anything else? May I ask for your assistance? I'm not in the mood to talk to money bags. There we go. Okay. So, let's go ahead and get ourselves in a decent looking street brawler. Maybe some messy hair would help that out a little bit. Sure. Silk scarf. Designer stubble. I don't know about designer stubble. But we could definitely go with like the scarred up face. Maybe that'll work out some. Alright. Um, we'll talk to this guy one more time. This may Excuse get us me, just uh, one question. Nah, never come across anything like this. A thumbs down from John, but it is what it is. Should we check and see if there's anything? Weighs roughly 210 pounds, Italian thug, affable. That's something. All right, well, if we have to fight our way in, we have to fight our way in. Hey, yo, this is private property. You lost something. Oh, you know what? I wonder if we could have recreated the tattoo. Crap. 
Oh, man, we should have went to one of the... Alright, well... Um... I'm here to discuss business with Mr. Bernadotti. I tried the front door, but... Mr. Bernadotti isn't seeing anyone. You have three seconds to walk away, or you'll never walk again. Capito? It's in Mr. Bernadotti's best interest to... One... One of your people is dead? Listen, the man Bernadotti sent to... Cho! Ah! <sighs> I did try to resolve this peacefully. <laughs> Short temper achievement unlocked. <laughs> well, we tried the subtle approach. I'm coming for you. No more crime for you until next month. I'm coming. Oh man, with those haymakers, my friend. I'm coming for you. Oh Lord. Oh. I'm coming. Too simple. I'm running. The snuff's ready. Woo. Roll. Roll with the punches. Well, I'm gonna Pocket sand. You. Oh. There we go. Don't bother moving. You've lost. No more crime for you until next month. Good lord, just took out those knees. Who is next? Ow. Whoa, lordy. Sir. Don't bother moving. Not Give ideal. Give him the pepper snuff. Time to knock this guy out. Where's the pocket sand? I forgot how the pocket sand went. There we go. Don't cry, you'll live. Oh, here come the big guns. Literally and figuratively. Ow. Take this! Woo! Sir. I'm coming for you. Too simple. Come on. Do your thing. Yes. I'm coming. No more crime for you and the snuff's you ready. You are the boss, aren't you? You can overcome the brute now. Oh, there's the discombobulate. Don't cry, you'll live. All right, took out another group of smugglers. I feel like we've accomplished something. Now what do we do? I don't know if that is the way out or. Sherry, look. This seems familiar. Oh, is this all stuff from it? Hi. No, sir. Don't hurt me. It's all right. I won't harm you. Like you didn't harm the folks on the way here. You know, John, I don't need that. I don't need that. Envoy testimony. Okay. V.H. Grintley. Flow blue tableware. Tableware, you say? A Dogon statue from West Africa. So this is like the refugees, like treasures. A century old at least. <laughs> uh, 
That man is terrified. Masks, traditional for the Chokwe people of Central Africa. VH Grindley Flow Blue Tableware. This is what lies behind the facade of Bernadotti Company Limited. See, you shouldn't be upset that I did what I did. An amazing piece of culture. I imagine many collectors and museums would be interested in having it. Okay, what do we got here, John? Is that the painting in question? Yes, it is. Let's see what's hidden there. Do we have to? Oh, is there someone we know? Vogel's stolen painting. Isn't it curious how it developed into a much more interesting case? Okay, then at that point... However twisted the imagery is, Mercurio's mastery is undeniable. He might be a, become a renowned artist on par with the greatest, for, but now we will never know. He might have become. And we're not done here. We got other stuff. Don't come any closer. One step and I'll stretch it to pieces. Puh. Go ahead. Make my day. Right, oh. Yes. Yep. Well, uh, excuse me, sir. I, I think I hear... I've got to... It's better I leave. Whoa. Oh, wow. That was as if somebody put my words in your mouth. Thank you, Dirty Harry. So we got logistics here. Okay, didn't really help matters much. Resources. Oh man, we're just going through this place, aren't we? Trying to get into accounting. This is it. This is where all the magic happens. <laughs> Please don't shoot me. I have a family. I'm not gonna shoot you, ma'am. Spare me. Probably have no idea what you're here for. Labels, expensive paper. Invitation to the ball, huh? Is a former school teacher? Uses sedatives and hostile. Well, I understand why she's hostile right now. Alright. Um. I suppose it's Mr. Bernard Dotty with our fine governor. Cordona 1875. 1875. It's taken a few years back. John, how many people in Cordona have a photograph with the governor, do you think? You definitely don't have one. Thanks, John. Can we just go ahead and get back into our normal clothes? Yes. Since that didn't work the way we wanted it to. Sales, perhaps? Ooh. So, you've cut through all the guards just to talk to me. Then come here. And we shall talk. Okay. Well, we will talk as soon as I finish seeing everything. Photograph of a little girl. Collection of books. Hmm. Anything in the waste paper basket? No? I'm getting the yeah, I'm getting the sense that this man is dangerous. And you know what, guys? We are gonna go ahead and have a chat with him at the beginning of the next episode. <laughs> Sorry, it's just how it's timed out. But um, we'll try and get to the bottom of this, and I think we've got a pretty significant uh, moral decision to make. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, that'd be a big help. And we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.